All right, so welcome to 21st Century Lighting Techniques. Um, this is really all about um, the type of lighting that we're doing now because of digital capture. Uh, so in essence, what I'm talking about are the types of things that we can do now that are easy with digital and weren't even a consideration in, in the past. Um, and maybe some things you haven't quite thought about because really light is light. And we still approach light sort of the same way. We have soft light, we have hard light, and the soft box umbrellas. All of those things are still valid. But there are some things that are available to us now with digital capture that uh, we're just really starting to learn about. Uh, the first thing that, that I really discovered very early on with digital capture was the the idea that it was very easy to do shot blending, where you take some different shots and then marry them together in Photoshop, it's very easy to do. So uh, this is a perfect example here. Um, this was a, a, a photograph for Epson uh, advertising purposes for their all-in-one printers. And they always have this uh, convention where they, it's a scanner printer you know, built into one. In the scanning stage, they would turn the image right side up so you could see, even though that's not the way you would scan this, obviously. Um, I mean, you would scan this so that this was flipped over and you'd see the, the, the back of that print. But for the picture, for the advertising, they want to show you that it was the same as the, the image coming out of the printer. And the problem when you have this, the lid just up like that is this. It's, it's in the shade. Right, so we want to get that lit. It's really hard to kind of light that, even with snoots, and try to bounce it light in there. But it's very easy if you just lift it up and photograph it that way, and then blend it together later in Photoshop. Trivial, right? Uh, but these are the things that, uh, when we were shooting film, you weren't used to doing this. You're, you were really trying to give a shot that didn't need retouching because that was your competitive advantage. Uh, and so you, you bend over backwards to try to get the light perfect in one shot. Well, now uh, you don't have to. The other thing that was kind of annoying the client on this shot is the glare here on the, uh, on the control panel. They want the control panel to be real, real clear. Uh, piece of cake. Shoot another shot with black tape and blend it back in. So I'm only gonna blend in the, the nice looking control panel from this shot back into this shot. Easy to do in Photoshop. So this is the kind of the first type of stuff that we were doing uh, early on. And also like lightening the background. You know, when you were shooting with film, letting, you know, sh shooting something on a white seamless to try to make it go white was always a pain in the butt. We're always trying to add lights and trying to get, get that background to go as clean white as possible. And it really was miserable to try to get it to work. Uh, now with Photoshop digital, it's not a problem. It's very easy to mask this out and, and deliver a shot that has nice clean white background without spending hours and hours and hours in the studio lighting it. The other thing, here's another shot that is the result of two light sources blended together. Uh, we have a hard light from the side and a soft light from above. But, um, okay, so this is what the hard light from the side looked like. And we're missing the soft uh, highlights in the beads and the silver is not lit up as nicely as it would be if we brought the soft box over it. So here's with the soft box, but look what it does to the background. Right, the background has some reflectivity to it and it's, this looks ugly but I can take and blend in just the, the highlights on the beads into the other shot and get a combined lighting effect. Shot blending, trivial. You could do this on the set and deliver this in five minutes to the client. Not a problem. Um, the other thing that I discovered fairly early on was this, uh, what I call false color lighting. Um, one of the first cameras that I worked with uh, was a leaf brick. We called it the brick because it was shaped like a, like a brick. And it had a filter wheel. 
and it took three shots, and this, this filter wheel kind of moved in the lens, you know, red, green, and blue. So you take three shots to get a full color image. Well, I discovered that if you move the light in between each of those shots, the RGB would be out of register, and you'd get some interesting effects. So here's just white light overall. Um, uh, now, if I take several shots and move the light around in, in different directions, and then take these individual light directions and put them into the RGB channels, I get this kind of multicolor lighting effect, which is great for things that don't have any color or are subtly, you know, like neutral. You can add some incredible color to something, and it's, it's, it has a lot of uh, interesting applications. So basically the technique is we need red, green, blue to create a full color image. If the light is different in all three of those channels, and they don't, it doesn't register, when you put them together, you're going to get uh, this sort of rainbow color effect. And sometimes it's, it's just an act of discovery to see what happens when, when you do this. Here's an example. Here, uh, this is the, the normal white light shot. I've got three light sources. There's light on the background, there's a top light and a side light. So this is all three lights going off at the same time. Now what I did also is take these light sources and shot them separately. So I shot the side light, the top light, and the background light separately. And the, I've got them now as grayscale documents to blend together to create this sort of colorful effect. Now you don't, you can mitigate the strength of this by blending that back in with this, the white light uh, shot. So we can get kind of a pastel effect. Uh, and uh, that's going back now to the white light shot. Okay, so I, let, me, let me show you this. Okay, so here's our, our white light shot. Here are our different uh, lighting directions. Now, something you can do when you have uh, grayscale documents, you've got, I've got three grayscale documents here that are the same size. And I can take, go into the channel of any one of these documents, and um, there's a command here called merge channels. As long as I have uh, three or more um, documents open that are the same size, um, so we can uh, merge the channels. So I get that from uh, the, the little flyaway um, options, channel options menu here in the upper right corner of the channels panel. And I select merge channels. And then I get a, do a dialog here that says, well, what kind of document do you want to create from these merge channels? So I want to create an RGB document. And I've got uh, three channels. I've got three grayscale documents open. And uh, I say, OK. And now I get to specify which channel these, these go into. And I, I've been very clever here, and I've named the documents so that I can put them in the right uh, channels to get the, the effect that I was going for. So I'm putting the red into the red and the green into the green. And when I say, OK, it takes them. See, now I only have two documents open. I have it my knows, untitled. It knows whatever documents you have open to them together. If they're the same size, it, yeah. If you have those three open and they're the same size, it will, that's what it will use. And they can be from completely different images, too. That's a lot of fun to play with. Uh, you, you can also, like, sometimes I'll take multiple colored shots in, with different lighting and then break the channels apart and play mix and match. So you can, you can break the channels apart in a color document by sort of the reverse process over here in the channels panel. Uh, we can split the channels of any multi-channel document. So if I split these channels, it goes back. And now we have three grayscale documents again. And I can, um, let's put them back together. 
going to merge the channels and we'll do it differently this time. RGB color. Okay, so instead of putting the red into the red, let's put the blue into the red. And uh, let's put the, the green where the blue was and the blue where the green was. I have no idea what this is going to look like, but let's see. Two blues. Oh, I got two blues. It won't let me do that. Let's put the red there. How's that? Okay, completely different color look, right? Let's go back, split the channels again. Let me merge the channels again. I like the other way better. So we'll put the red, green, blue. Uh, actually, this is the way, exactly the way it was before. <laughs> so I have to, well, all right. Sometimes I have to do this like six or seven times to figure out what the best way of merging them together is. But let's take this document now, the color that it is, and we're going to apply it to the original uh, white light version. <laughs> okay, so I click, click my tab for the colored document here, and I'm going to drag this on top of the other document. Now in CS6, I mean starting kind of with CS5, it worked this way. Uh, I'm going to click and hold down on the shift key and click in the center of the image with the move tool. And I'm going to drag up to the, one of the tabs here till it comes forward, and then I have to drag down and then let go with the mouse while holding down the shift key. It's a little bit like rubbing your belly and patting your head. For a lot of people, this is way too much coordination. Um, but we can say, now, let's take the color from this layer. So I'm changing the layer blending mode here. From normal, I'm going to make it uh, color. And so now what, what, what that's doing is it's saying, take the color from this layer, but keep the luminosity from the underlying layer. So the brightness ha hasn't changed. I'm just getting this kind of different pastel lighting of color into this. And if I wanted to be really slick, I could put a layer mask in there and mask off the color of the flower here. Get that white, the yellow flower back if I want. So you can see, you can do a lot of very sophisticated things very easily uh, with this approach. Okay, let me. Right, come on. Don't save. So these are some examples of that strategy done in a little more sophisticated way. This is probably uh, five or six different versions, kind of blending, taking the best parts of each. Uh, you know, like I had a really good uh, one for the mouse in the lower right corner here, uh, but the keyboard from another shot was better, and you know, maybe the upper half of the keyboard was better in one shot. So I sort of blended several shots together to get this kind of really uh, interesting rainbow lighting effect. Um, here's another one where parts of the stethoscope were blended back in, the white light parts, uh, and I kept the sort of multicolored shadows in the background from the different light sources. Uh, also was shining lights through some glass bricks to get uh, those sort of streaks in the background. Again, that three RGB split channel approach taking the, you know, the the red channel from one light direction, the green channel from another light direction, merging them together to create these interesting rainbow lighting effects. Um, this is a, another kind of a trick effect with a, a, a black cloth or sort of shiny uh, material and was just blowing with a fan and shot several shots and then did the, the rainbow lighting or false color lighting thing. And then did a mirror, uh, you know, flipped it and differenced it over itself and created this sort of mirror image effect. A little more straightforward. Um, colorizing the light this way, you get much more intense uh, um, primary colors. And blending it back in with some white light to kind of mitigate some of the, uh, the rainbow effect. Okay, the next thing that uh, really started being played with was uh, lighting uh, in layers 
where the lights you blend different light sources up in layers. Um, so, for instance, I had a on assignment uh, where I was working with Mercier Wimberg Photography in uh, in Los Angeles. They have this industrial photo shoot, and this is always you know like here you're trying to glamorize this butt ugly machine, right? <laughs> We really want this to be, this is the sexiest drilling router thing on the planet. And it's like, okay, how about this? You know, now it looks like Star Wars, right? Um, and this was literally me going around with the flash head and flashing it in different directions all the way around. Uh, and building up the lighting in layers. So, so um, here was one light. I put in another layer. This is the exposure I got, right? The, most of, you know, we're using a very short uh, shutter speed to make the ambient light drop out and be dark. Um, and uh, so I, the next shot gets put in a layer above and screened down. And as I add the light, screening the lights on top of each other, it builds up to create uh, this sort of cool space age lighting effect. And then the, we just blend the guy from the white light shot back into the, uh, here the client looked at this and got, God, that's great, but it's, a, it's just too extreme. And all you really need to do is take the white light version and blend it in partially, you know, a little bit just to get a little more of the kind of sense of reality in it. And this was the one that they bought. I, I still think that looks better, but you know, that's the one that they, they wanted. There's a couple more examples of this sort of thing. Here's the finished shot. This is how it built up in layers. And these layers are shot with white light, and then each layer is colorized. And I'll, I'll go into Photoshop with another image and show you that, that process. But uh, here, each layer was colorized to create a, you know, um, different, to really separate out the light sources in an interesting way. And masking the guys back in. The reason this is even available now, as opposed to the days when you were shooting film, is that in digital, each capture is, if you have the camera locked down on a tripod, of course, each image is captured in per perfect registration with the previous one. So it gets to be very easy to take multiple shots and then layer them up and make them line up. Shooting with film, this just was not an option because you'd have to scan the film. Each scan would never be perfectly registered with the next, and then you'd have to sort of somehow try to get them registered. It was a major pain. Um, but uh, with digital capture, I could actually do this while we were shooting drag these layers in and build the shot right in front of the client. Uh, here's an, another example. It was, it, usually it works well with uh, static subjects, subjects that don't move. Um, in this case, this is multiple light sources, and she's lying down on a black velvet uh, cushion, and uh, the camera's up above, shooting straight down. It's on a big uh, studio stand. And what I did here, I had... I had an iPhone app. The camera was up there with a tripe with a computer, and I, I'm walking around down with the iPhone, triggering the camera and seeing the shot, and then getting my flashlight. So I was literally painting this with with uh, with LED flashlights. So it, it would shoot different angles, different uh, directions. I'm wandering around, tripping the camera with. Uh, the iPhone and uh, painting with uh, a flashlight and looking at the shot and going, okay, what do I need to do next? And then blending them all together uh, by screening those lights in layers. I could pick just the part that I want and blend it in. So now for the rest of this, I'm going to build this image. And we're going to do this in Photoshop. So I have to... Okay, so I have a, a bunch of different light sources here in different directions. We'll see how we're going to all put these all together. And um, 
I mean, this was my kind of straight, you can see the soft box, it's just right over the lens, it's flat, kind of, you know, even light. Uh, and then I shot a bunch of different directions. This is just the, the background lit without lighting the foreground, okay? And I'm, I'm going to uh, use this um, to create a kind of self-masking rear projection sort of thing. I'm going to put the sky in there. Then it's, it's dead easy. But I'm gonna, uh, there's a few things I want to retouch first. These little, I don't like these little highlights in here. So uh, I'm just going to quickly uh, retouch those out. So bear with me. Because um, uh, this is going to make a difference in the, um, in the composited version. So I want to take those little defects out right now. Okay. So step one, I want to get that background in there. Get my move tool. I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag up to the tab for that first shot. Drag down, let go with the mouse, but keep my finger on the shift key, and it drops in. I resize. I have this size, so that's the same size already, um, and uh, so I know it's 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 centered now. Holding down the shift key centers it, and so they're in perfect registration. This is more important for the other shots, but right now all I have to do is change my apply mode from normal to multiply, and multiply is darkening. The, the underlying image with the contents of this layer. And that creates my kind of rear projection look um, very easily. Now what I'm going to do is drag the other light on top of this and build it up in layers. So we'll start with our kind of straight lighting shot. I'm going to click and drag, again holding down the shift key, back on top of that, and it drops in registration. Okay, so now to blend this with the underlying layer, and for all the subsequent layers that I'm going to be adding, I'm going to screen this. And so you can see it just screens over on top of it, and I've got the background is already sort of self-masked. So I, I don't have to do anything fancy to get that uh, to blend together. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do this at, at low opacity, though, because really what I want to what I want to have here is sort of just a low general ambience. And I'm going to add uh, lighting on top of this. Now, I don't like these ugly reflections of the softbox. So I'm going to mask them out. I'm going to make a layer mask and paint with black and just paint out the parts that I don't like. I'll paint out like all the ugly reflections. And now this has got kind of an interesting possibility. There's a little reflection in the side here, but I, I, I'm probably going to build this up better uh, in another layer. But I, I want to kind of make that edge sort of soft. So I'm going to just kind of paint that edge out. Paint this thing out. Um, I don't like these little reflections. Now, I had a lot of experience as a um, as a photographer in back in the day of film, and I have to tell you, when doing a, a subject like this, um, it was just hours and hours, you'd spend a whole day trying to get perfect light on a subject like this. Okay. Um, now, I want to get, uh, I want to light up these labels. And they're, they're actually in this layer. I'm going to add that layer 
back on again. Um, so I'm going to do it this way so we get another repeat of that process. Shift, drag uh, to the tab. When it comes forward, you let go with the mouse. Okay. And then we're going to screen that in again. Only this time I'm going to hide this layer completely. So I'm holding down the Option key when I click on the layer mask icon, so I get a black layer mask. And so I hid that layer completely, and now I can just paint in where I want the light from this layer to be applied over the underlying image. So I'm going to get a, kind of a this nice soft brush here, uh, maybe 30% opacity, and I'm going to paint with white paint uh, over where the layers are, the, la the labels. You get a nice kind of spotlight effect. Okay, and um, let's let's do this. Uh, let's get this from the side, just a little kind of kiss. Now I don't want it to go over that part, so I'll paint black over. The let's look at next shot. Okay, so this one. Uh, this is kind of like what you'd had to do to get a, a, a highlight on the bottle. You had to put a white card in there. But normally, shooting this, I would never shoot with the white card in the shot because, you know, it, it ruins the shot. But I'm only going to paint in this one little thing right along the edge there. I don't care about the card because it, it, you'll never see it. Um, so let's drag that on top. Okay, screen, hide it. So I hold down the option key and click on that layer mask icon, hidden. And now, <clears throat> again with a brush, uh, I'm going to paint just, just for that, that little highlight along the edge there. And now I see there's the, there's the, the card showing up. Just want to get just a little, little edge going there, and we'll paint that card out. Uh, and when I was doing this the first time, I realized, you know, this wine is red wine, but right now it looks black. I, I want to get a little something in there, and uh, in the the card, when the white card is behind it, we can actually see through that white light coming through the wine. So. Uh, why don't I just try painting in the inside the, the wine here just to get a little of that uh, white card showing through. So uh, I'm just going to kind of hit it. And then I realize it's, I'm getting this little halo kind of coming up above the edge there, and it's, it's kind of cool. <laughs> I've done this demo many times. Uh, I've shown this. Uh, uh, every time I do this, this image comes out looking a little different. And that's kind of one of the cool things about this. It, is it, This now is sort of a, an act of discovery and play. So as I'm playing around with things here, uh, I, I can look at the original sources and try and decide, is there an element in here that I'd like to recover or use like here's this is a shot that I'm going to bring in um, that has, has a really good glass stem here and the, and the light on these leaves is, is more interesting um, and maybe this cork thing looks kind of cool I'll, I'll include that um, and actually that's already in a layer here that's in this layer uh, this layer which is also here so um, let's, I'm selecting the, the layer mask for that, and I can paint in the cork, right? Just the cork and the stem. 
Okay, so we've got this one, we've got this one. This one has actually maybe a nicer stem. So maybe I don't want the stem. So you get the idea, I can kind of go back and forth now and I'm really, I'm lighting, I've already got all my light shot, and, but now I'm really lighting it. Now I'm using Photoshop and I'm building the lights up in layers. Um, so let's, let's put this one in there. Holding down shift, drag it up. Okay, let's put it on top here and screen it. Hide it. Hold on option, got a black layer mask. And now, uh, now we'll add that little thing in there. And the I like some of the light on, on the leaves, so I'm just gonna kind of like kind of paint this in. Just kind of just a little bit. And I can paint, build it, you know, uh, with low opacity and sort of build it up slowly, gradually. Okay. This one, uh, I love this leaf, and this one's where I have a nice uh, reflection for the glass. So let's get that in there. Hold down the shift key. Drag it on top, put it on screen. Um, let's hide it. So I know I want to get that reflection in the glass. Uh, again, I'm just going to sort of paint it in. Now, one of the things I used to do um, when, um, when putting these reflections in glasses, to try and get it feathered, you'd kind of spray paint it on a piece of a big card and kind of put a gradient in there, try to get it, you know, it's like, now I don't even need to worry about that anymore. I'll just feather that edge down the, with, with a brush. Get it right down into the little knife edge there, just the way I want it. And I think I like the, the light on this, uh, this leaf from that layer. Now you see here there's a little bit of where the leaf moved and it's a little out of register. That's one thing that I'd, I'd probably have to come in and retouch out that double edge. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Okay, so we, we, you can kind of see I'm, uh, I'm, um, I've got very specific lighting things happening in these layers. And um, I can also colorize the light in, in any individual layer. So like this light, let's give it a blue cast. So that's this second layer here. So I'm going to select that layer. And um, I will, I'll just do this with a curve. Uh, I'm going to hold down Option when I select the curve adjustment from this, from the bottom. Uh, icon here. So these are my adjustment layers. Uh, and I'll select curves, but I get the option to clip it right away. So I, I want this curve to affect just the layer underneath it. And um, then I'm going to take out. I'll take out red altogether, and maybe a little bit of the green. So now I have kind of a blue light. And you can maybe boost it a little bit like that. Okay, so I can colorize the light to a different effect. If I don't want this color, like I want to bring back, I just want that blue color on the rocks, I'll just mask it off. Right? 
too easy. Okay, so we can see red wine, uh, a glow, the red color of the wine coming through the glass here, but the bottles are kind of black. Um, so, and they're black in every other shot that I've got, even down here at the bottom. Even though the background is lit up, the wine is black, right? So um, I'm going to actually now, the one time where I'm using a, an adjustment layer to alter the contents of the image, other than you know colorizing this a little bit down here, I'm going to add a curve adjustment on top um, to brighten up the 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 red or this black in this bottle. I want to brighten that up to make red. So I'm going to take the red channel and we'll just something like that. Invert the mask. So I do Command or Control I, and we'll paint that in again with white. And you know it may be a little too extreme here. I'm just getting the the shape in there that I want. And we'll just reduce the, the uh, opacity of that. So let's get a little hint of the red in there. OK. All right, what do you think? I think I set a speed record on that one. I mean, it usually takes me longer to do that. Um, so. We, uh, we have done this, uh, I've used this very successfully for still lifes. You saw how uh, I used it on the, the model lying down. The only thing that you have to be careful with is making sure that your subject doesn't move in between exposures. So we had a little bit of a problem here with that leaf uh, moving between exposures. But uh, you can do quite interesting lighting this way that really was literally impossible to do before. Um, I could do another one for you if you'd like. Let's see. We're at 2.30. We're, out, we're pretty much, that's it, isn't it? We're, I have 15 more minutes. Um, Chris, B&H has that buckle flash. <laughs> the buckle flash. <laughs> uh, any other questions? No? I can do one more. Yeah, please do. All right, let's... All right, let's see. Um, they're not of you, are <laughs> They're not of me. No, they're not of me. Let's see, we got... Uh, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah we're, <laughs> we're down, okay, you know, we can do that. Okay, so um, I've got these all as, as uh, grayscale, even though, they're, and they're in RGB because I my plan was to colorize this. Um, I, I usually what I here you can see uh, this was lit with a flashlight. You can see uh, here's my hand in the shot moving the light that's painting this highlight on her. And um, so I usually what I do is I pick one that I want to make my base and then I build on top of that. So we'll start with this one, and um, I'll cover up the parts that I don't want to show. Um, just by painting with black into this layer. Are these flashlights LEDs? Yeah, this was like little a little LED flashlight. They're, they're, those are things are incredible. I mean, they're incredibly bright. I usually have a problem because they're too bright. You know, they I, I need to have a little bit of time to paint the light on. So sometimes I put a gel on it just to kind of dim it down a little bit. Um, 
and uh, so I'm going to just paint that out. Uh, paint out elements here that I just don't want to show. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe zoom in here. Paint out a little bit of this background. I could do better, but I don't have a, a tablet with me here today. Um, okay, and then, then I'm just going to kind of try to figure out which one I want to use here. Let's use this. And uh, so again, strategy, move tool, Hold down the shift key up. Now, she, I know she moves between these two shots, not a lot of motion. Her head is not in exactly the same position. Uh, at, at some point, she got tired of holding her head up. So we, this, I think, was the, the, the next shot that I did. Um, I'll mask off that part. Okay, um, and in fact, let's see, do I want to use the whole thing? Yeah, I can use the whole thing. That's, that's, that's fine. Okay, so now my other, uh, have other angles here. This one. All right, so let's see um, what we can do with this. I wasn't planning on doing this one. You're getting a bonus. See, here's now the head's in a different position. <laughs> uh, so I obviously can't use the head from this one. And I probably don't want to use everything Anyway, so um, it's kind of interesting. So here's an inter another strategy. So I'm going to put a white layer mask, but instead of painting with black the parts that I don't want, I'm going to uh, black out the parts I want to keep. And so the part that I want to keep is we'll, we'll keep uh, a piece, we'll keep the breast here, a piece of the arm. And um, so I'm going to kind of carefully paint out. I'm going to mask off the part that I want to keep. Let's see here. Keep this part, the arm, and I'll keep just this little sliver of the arm. So here my strategy is I'm covering up the things that I want to keep, and what I'll do is I'll just invert that layer. And then I can kind of refine this from here if I want. Maybe I should see the whole hand there. Doesn't make sense without seeing it. All right. One last one. So this is what happens if you don't hold down the, the shift key. It doesn't drop into the right place. And usually I just have to, you know, I'll just redo it. Easier than. 
So hold down the shift key. Okay. Now it's now the only thing I really want is just this sl little slice along the leg here. So I'll hide that. Just kind of paint in just that little bit. And I like that kind of or sort of those two slices sort of join right there. And maybe maybe I like this, maybe I don't. I don't know. I'll leave it there for now. And now I can play around with colorizing. Um, so we can colorize the background. Um, and, you know, let's see. Maybe just use hue saturation. Uh, at the bottom of the properties panel in the adjustment, there's this little, this little kind of icon here. This is how you get it to clip so that it affects just the underlying layer. Now, I don't have to do that with this particular one because there's nothing but the one layer underneath it. But on all the other ones, I'm going to be clicking this. I just wanted to point that out. Um, so uh, we're going to colorize that. And uh, I don't know. Make it kind of red. Why not? And uh, this this light here. So hue saturation. Click this, and now that is clipped. So it's only affecting that layer. So when I colorize this now, uh, I can get into the sort of this green color maybe. Right. And we'll make that one blue. Okay, so here's a here's a situation where you know it's it's breaking to white here, and I need it to be maybe uh, not not so bright. I can use the lightness to dim it down, and then add more color with the saturation. And where it overlaps with the red, it's creating this purple. So it, any place where things overlap, you're going to get, you know, you can kind of combine the colors. And last one, last one, what do we colorize that? What do you think? Purple. Let's do purple. <laughs> I heard purple. <laughs> From the back, purple. All right, kind of the impossible lighting. Uh, try to do that for real. She'd, she'd, <laughs> she'd never st sit there long enough for you to get this to work. <laughs> um, so uh, there you have it. I think uh, there, there are a number of things you can do uh, with this. And uh, the, hopefully this just gives you a little hint of the possibilities. And, uh, and, and any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, and I'm going to be doing another presentation right after this in a, in a half hour break. Uh, I'm going to be pre presenting uh, um, portrait retouching for the artistically challenged. So uh, we're going to do some very cool new skin smoothing techniques and uh, some other little tricks to make uh, retouching a lot easier. So uh, stick around if you'd like. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much.